How to create a copy of this picture activity. Hi, Kerry here from Dream Creative B and welcome to my channel where I show you how to make money online with KDP low content books and Etsy with new training every week. So be sure to hit the big red subscribe button down below. So today I am showing you how to actually create a how to copy this picture activity and I'm going to be using PowerPoint for it. Yes, I am going to create some more of these videos using different software so that you can be putting your activity books together. I've already created a video showing you how to create a dot to dot in PowerPoint and that will be in the top right hand corner. And I've also done one for spot the difference. And again, that will be in the right hand corner. Again, these are all for PowerPoint and I'll be doing the exact same using other tools. So here we are on Amazon and Amazon showing us that activity books for kids is very popular. The volume the search is over 8,100 per month. Amazon is telling us there's over 60,000 results for activity books for kids. So obviously you need to be niching that down for like space or cross niching it, unicorns, doing different things. But all activity books have is loads of different activities like dot to dot, scissor skills, connect the dots, mazes, Sudoku, battleships, uh, bridges, there's all sorts of ones here that you can be doing like hidden pictures, spot the difference. So, so we're actually going to concentrate on books like this, how to draw. Now this is a full book on how to actually draw and it's got things in about tracing but all we're interested in is creating something like that. So I already started now, this is in PowerPoint so I got a hold of an owl that was an SVG that I took it apart and then I actually started doing that and I will show you how to actually do that. So what I did is I went to Creative Fabrica and the reason being is because Creative Fabrica has got some good things already and already there is some copy of the picture ones there that you can be taking or 30 pages and you can be combining them with other things to make them unique so that they are different images. So I went on the search and wanted to see if there were any more ideas and this is another idea where you can be actually changing it so it looks like a puzzle. These are good if you're doing printables on Etsy so that they can actually cut them out and put things there and check and do something different. So you can get some good ideas from coming to create a Fabrica. So what I chose was this owl coloring book for kids. So the, there was a lot of options. There was SVGs, EPS, JPEG and PNG. Now I wanted to use the SVG and the reason for it is so I could pull it all apart and I'll actually show you that. Now there was, from this same artist, there was actually quite a lot of pictures so that they've got a huge selection of different things that you can be looking at for sale. So coloring pages for kids is the one here. And there's loads, loads of ideas like this ram or sheep or birds. And there are some really cute little ideas, but you want something that's got not too much detail. Like that's got quite a lot in there. So there's a nice little unicorn now the whales are nice to draw penguins are nice and easy to draw the dolphin is nice and easy to draw and that was the owl that I got and the tiger and the hippo and this cat's quite easy to draw so you could be taking in and that gets very cute and again cute so easy you want something that's easy with big lines for kids to actually pick up and be able to be drawing so if we go to PowerPoint, I'm going to restart a complete new one so you can actually see what I've done. So let me drag this down so you can actually see. I'll move these out of the way because some of you said you can't see when I put them on. Can't see what I'm doing. And I'm going to make that blank. Then I'm going to go to design and I'm going to change it to eight and a half because we know as kids activity books, that tends to be the standard size, the US letter size. And I'm not going to put any bleed into it either. So that is that. Now what I want to do is I want to put a table into it. I'm just going to make it bigger so you can actually see what I'm doing. Let's make that a bit bigger as well. So I'm going to put a table in. So I'm going to insert 
And what I want is I want 12 by 14. So I'm going to insert this and I'm going to do 12 by 14. So 12 columns by 14. And then that comes out there. And all I'm going to do is just stretch it out a bit so it fits in nicely. And then I'm going to change the shading to white or I could have shaped, changed it to none. And I actually want all the borders. Now, I need to change some of these so that they are a different line. So what I can do is I can change the click on the draw table and I'm going to change that to a full line. And I want a full line there, there, and I can just go all the way through and I will speed this section up so that I can get finished. There we go. Okay, I've got one that's not right, so I need to go back in here, pick the draw tool, change it to the lines, line, and that one there. I think I have got everything. So that is now my table. So if you wanted to do it simpler rather than as detailed as that, so this is similar to what's on this book here. So if you wanted to make it a lot more simpler, you could do by just going in here and inserting your table. In fact, make sure I'm on the right layer, insert, and I could insert the table there. And I could do six by seven rather than doing it and making sure that my lines are there rather than doing it 12 by 14. And again, and then I could perhaps fit two of these on here. So I'm going to change that to all borders and I'm going to check the shading off. And that is that one there. And then I could just duplicate it by going Command D or Control D and then just dragging that there. So you can see that's too big. So I could just do that. And again, if I want the exact same size, I can just duplicate it again. And then I know they're the same size. So there we are. So that's how I would actually get everything ready. Then what I can do is in a, insert my image. And again, I'm doing an SVG. And I'm going to tell you, I'm going to show you why. So I'm going to select the image, insert. And now I can place it where I want. And it's a bit big. So I'm going to just knock it down a bit and I can place it here. So that the hair is in the middle. Yep. Okay. And then what I could do is I could duplicate the whole thing. The whole slide, clicking on slide, command D and it duplicates the whole thing. Now, what I can do is, if I've already shown them what to do, I can just go ahead and delete it. But if we look at the example of this one, if we look inside, it actually tells them how to actually do it. It gives them an example, and we can be doing the exact same thing. I'm going to convert this to a shape format, then I'm going to ungroup it so that I can get to different areas. So what I can do is I can go to graphic format, and I can go convert to shape and then here I can just right click on it in fact I'm going to move the table out of the way so I'm just going to slide the table out of the way and I'm going to ungroup the whole thing so now I've ungrouped it I can actually get rid of all the bottom things because they're not going to draw that in at all. And I might I might leave that in. I might get rid of this eye here because I don't need it. Get rid of that. Get rid of the beak. 
So what we want to do is we basically want to get rid of this half of the picture and so that they can start off by drawing that. And the way you do that is you insert shapes. But before we insert shapes, I'm going to put a selection panel up here so I can actually be moving things around. And the way I do it is I make sure I'm on the home tab and then where it says arrange, I click down there and, and click selection pane and that brings up so it's actually showing me what each thing is called so form 13 I know is the outside form 26 is that there and then form 29 is the outside of the eye and form 31 is the eye now I'm interested in this two outside parts but I now need to use the shapes to actually get rid of what I want so I go insert and I'm going to use the square or rectangle shape and I'm going to draw round what I don't want and I'm just going to maneuver it so I can select so I don't need to change the color if I don't want with this one you can if you want you can change it to shape fill to white or black outline but you don't need now what you must do is you must make sure that you select the rectangle last so the first shape I'm selecting is the outside of the owl then the second shape and I'm going to hold my command or control button down it lets me click on the second one which is that sort of the eye shadow and then finally I want to click on the rectangle and I can either click on the rectangle there or I can click on the selection pane and now I know it's all selected and the reason why I need to do it in order is because it'll subtract the one wrong way around if I don't and you'll see it so it's merge shapes subtract and now it's taken away what I don't want it's left me these funny shapes here but I can work with those so I also want to get rid of like this bottom half as well so I'm going to go insert and as you can see it's actually merged some stuff down as well it's merged the two shadows together so I'm just left with the the eye really so what I want to do now is insert again I'm going to insert a rectangle again this time that size and it's covering the eye which I don't want and I can move things in as well and if you're not sure I've seen what I'm doing I'll just zoom in there and I've got a little thing there so what I can also do is I can add an extra shape here just to make sure I get rid of that so I could actually union those two so I hold the shift key down merge shapes and I could union those two. So now I know that that's union. So again, making sure I hold on the outside, which I want to retain first, then I can do the command down and select that rectangle that I've just union. And again, merge shapes, and I want subtract, and it will have taken away the eye what I wanted. Now I've got those funny lines there but I need to do something first. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select the table and I'm going to bring the table back. I'm going to just eyeball to see where I actually had it before. So sort of there. Hang up. And that's about right so we've got these lines here to get rid of and that line there at the bottom so just zoom in again we just use shapes now this time we do actually need to change the color of it so I'll start with this bottom one here and I need to change it to white and I need to change to no outline but if I just move my mouse away, you can see it's covered that line, which I don't want. I don't want the grid line covered. So I'm just going to move my mouse up a bit and see if that's worked. It has, but I could do with coming in a bit more. Might actually move the whole image up a bit so it's not on the same line. Actually, got something to that I'm not covering. Let's 
rest of it. Well, there we go. So that one's done. And then what I want to do is insert another shape. This time put it up here. So I'm covering this bit here. And again, shape fill white, no outline. And again, I can maneuver it around until I'm happy with that one. And I can see I'm not going to be happy with that bit there. So I'm just going to duplicate and see if I can just cover that there. And then I'm just going to rub it. So that's what I'm there. And then again, duplicate that. Bring it up here. Don't need to just... So that is the owl done halfway through so that they can be following along and doing the rest of it with following the shape. So you can say start from here and move your way down and they can see what they're actually doing. So next one is a nice simple one. So if we go back to create a fabric and actually choose this fat cat because this is nice and simple for them to use. What we can do is go back to PowerPoint and we've already created these simple grids. Insert, go to picture from file and I've already downloaded the cat and I can put the SVG in or I can put the PNG in this time because I'm not actually going to change it. So insert and all I need to do is resize it. Now the reason for using an SVG is because you can resize it without it being pixelated, which is great. So then you just need to put it somewhere so that they can copy. And there is a simpler one that they can just copy down there and you can leave the full image for them to see. And that is how you create a copy this picture style grid that you can work through. So if you like this video, please hit the thumbs up button as well. Don't forget to subscribe with the little B above my head. And remember to check out my how to create dot to dots in PowerPoint and how to create spot the difference picture in PowerPoint as well.